This is a download from BFM 89.9, the business station. This is Race a Game. I'm Frida Liu. Good morning. And discipline is freedom. You may disagree with the statement, and if you do, you are certainly not alone. For many people, discipline is a dirty word that is equated with the absence of freedom. In fact, the opposite is true. As Stephen R. Covey once wrote, the undisciplined are slaves to moods, appetites, and passions. And in the longer term, the undisciplined lack the freedom that comes with possessing particular skills and abilities. Uh, here today with me is Aaron Lee from One Training Work Life Management, and uh, he's going to explain to us that if you struggle with self-discipline, the good news is that it can be developed, which is very good. Now, our topic today, uh, emotional intelligence, how to have self-discipline in the workplace. Now, when I think of the word uh, emotional intelligence, I always think of the external side of things. You know, you're aware of uh, what's happening around you, but I never looked at it as something within. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Freda. It's uh, good to be here. Well, emotional intelligence is, is very much within before we move and face the people outside. And uh, somehow, that have, have, having trained in emotional intelligence for so many years, people still find it difficult to stay on their task mm. and achieve what they really want to pursue in their life. So what is within? Within means that self-discipline, we are talking about delaying gratifications. Mm. You know, staying on to a task rather than jumping onto the fun stuff. And being able to focus and to pursue, pursue the goals which you always want in your life. So emotional intelligence is like taking action inside out. Eh? Doing difficult and challenging tasks like reading a technical book, which might not be really fun. And also and pick up a new skills. Yeah. And how much we, can we stay on to that? So there is something really interesting in terms of emotional intelligence, looking within, you know, how much that we are doing within in terms of uh, emotional intelligence. Okay, now what is then self-discipline and what isn't? Well, self-discipline, interesting enough, is a skill. And uh, many of us never thought of that. And, and none of us are born with it, and not you and me. Okay. And uh, improving self-discipline is just like any skills. That needs a lot of practice, lots of practice. And uh, in any situation, self-discipline means regardless of your emotional state, you know, being happy, being sad, being angry, you, you still need to stay on to the task that you do. And unfortunately, many people do not understand the psychology of self-discipline and do not understand what's going on behind the scenes okay. of what we see in front of us. Yeah. Okay. So it, it, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, uh, one of the very interesting things of self-discipline is there's just, just like you go to a shopping complex, you hear music behind the scenes. Mm. Subconsciously, <laughs> we're talking about subconsciously. Okay. There's a lot of things going on subconsciously and we are not aware of it consciously, such as fear uh -huh. that takes us away uh, from being self-disciplined. Okay, and so you talk about fears, right? What, what are the fears out there? Well, they are. They, let, let me talk about fear and also another very interesting emotion that drives us. Mm -hmm. And other than fear, the other emotion is desire. Mm. And desire means that we have desire to stay alive, just like you and me. You know, you know, we work hard and we try to keep things going. And surely many of us want to achieve a lot of things in our life, important goals and all that. You know, when we were little, that we once want to achieve something great. We want to become a lawyer, a doctor, an engineer. What some of us did and many did not. So that's desire. Mm. Well, interesting enough, fear that it is one of our favorite emotions. Okay, our yeah. fear, okay, our favorite emotions. Unconsciously, it's our favorite emotion. Oh yes, oh yes, and and there are five different fears that we have. Okay. Yeah. What What are these? Well, the fears. One of the fears that you probably guessed by now is fear of failure. Right. Yeah, we, we are so afraid to fail. And uh, research after research, I've... It's called Kiasu. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the greatest obstacle and to personal success is fear of failure. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason is uh, we are so afraid of being humiliated. Okay. Therefore, it makes it so difficult to stay being disciplined. So whenever we face with a fear, we go a little bit deeper. Okay, fear of failure, why? Yes. Because we're afraid of being humiliated. Right. Okay. So uh, it, it, because of fear of being humiliated, then uh, we run away from commitments. Mm. And that makes it so difficult to be self-disciplined, mm. to get things done. And, and the other very interesting part, the second greatest fear of human is fear of success. Hmm. 
And uh, interesting enough, success is such a positive word. Okay. When we talk about success in our life, success in our career, even company name themselves starting with success. And how can we be afraid of success? Because success means more responsibility. Okay. Yeah. Yes. You, you have more th- tasks to work on. Uh, you have more people to manage. You have more yeah. bosses to manage. Okay. And life gets a bit more complicated. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fear of success because you don't want to be responsible. Oh, yeah. So, so then um, unconsciously that we stay away from success. Right. Psychologically, it's very interesting, you know, how that drives us without us knowing it because it runs in our subconscious minds. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then what else? Well, the, well, the other fear would be fear of rejections. Mm-hmm. And all of us, I would say most of us like to be popular and we like to be liked. And we, want, we do not want to lose favor with our friends, with our family member, with our colleagues and all that. Mm-hmm. And some of the situations that we might be in is sometimes we choose to stay quiet even though we are entitled for an example overdue increments mm. or, or even the girl that you like. <laughs> yeah, and, and she end up marrying another man. Okay, okay. <laughs> yes, you are rejected. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's like you try to satisfy, satisfy everyone and then you end up losing yourself. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right. Fear rejection. And then, all right. Well, well, the fourth fear would be fear of mediocrity, being a mediocre. So interesting enough, and uh, most of us, I would say, most of us want to do our best, and and uh, some of us want to become perfect. So in order to achieve that, we are so afraid of not being our best, and, and guess what we do? We procrastinate. Yeah. We delay the thing that we should have done that we thought we are not good enough. Okay. That, that we are not good enough for as a leader, as a manager, as a friend. And that, that really takes us away from being self-disciplined and pursue the goals we always wanted to. Hmm. Okay, yeah. what's the fifth one? The last fear, the fifth fear will be fear of risk. Okay. Yeah, Malaysian will say, play safe. Lah. Play safe. Yeah, play safe. <laughs> and security and safety have become so important. And it's become like everything. Yeah, we, we are so comfortable with the same thing, same friend. Mm. Same lunch. Same lunch. Same lunch. Yeah, I can have same lunch uh, every day. Oh yeah, same, <laughs> same kind of things. That is exactly exactly what we call about being in comfort zones. Right. Yeah, okay. That is exactly You're comfortable. the fear. It's very interesting how you you know the the five fears you talk about failure and success. The, I mean they're opposites, not. Oh yes. And then uh, mediocrity and uh, rejection, and then yeah. there's risk. So these are fears, and we have to dig deeper, I guess, to all this. Now. Um, and I guess, so how then mm. do we become self-disciplined? Uh, we'll find out from Aaron Lee uh, from One Training Work Life Management right after this Raise Your Game, BFM 89.9. Good morning. This is Frida Liu. It's Raise Your Game. Aaron Lee from One Training Work Life Management. We're discussing emotional intelligence, how to have self-discipline in the workplace. Um, early on, we, we were talking about the fears that we have uh, and to dig a little deeper why we have these fears. Fear of failure, success, uh, rejection, mediocrity, and also, what was the last one again? Risk, eh? Um, you know, when, because all of these things have underlying uh, factors as well, how do we trick ourselves into losing self-discipline? Well, there's something really interesting. And uh, we, we trick our mind. Mm. Well, it, as a matter of fact, we poison our mind. Okay. Yeah, on, uh, on a very constant basis that we might not be aware of. And uh, we find excuses of not doing the right thing. Poisons, ah? Uh? Oh, yeah. We poison our okay. minds. Okay. And, uh, and it is a real challenge when we poison our mind to stay on track and do being self-disciplined. But there, there are five frequently found poisons <laughs> that we use on our own okay. every day. Uh-huh. Yeah. Let, let me summarize in one word so that, that we, it, it sounds fami- familiar for most of us. So the sentence goes like this. Cannot lah. How can? Like that law? Huh? Don't know. See first lah. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> right. so, so these are the five poisons okay. <laughs> okay. that it might sound familiar to right. you and, and many others. Okay. And the, the thing is, so in order to be self-disciplined, we need to look into the poison we use every day. Okay. Yeah. And uh, if I could share... Yeah. Uh, the five poison and try to decode. Okay, decode. Yeah, okay. You decode the five poisons <laughs> okay. uh, in our day to day life. What was the first one? See yeah, the la. first one is cannot lah. Cannot lah. Cannot lah. <laughs> yeah, and I like to call it takbolism. 
<laughs> yeah, actually, it's skepticism. Ah. Yeah, and uh, a skeptical person always asks why. Mm-hmm. They question value of everything. Yeah, and knowing that life is not perfect, mm-hmm. and uh, but a skeptic can always find flaw in absolutely anything. <laughs> everything. And 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 the worst part is it, it magnifies it, ah. and to make it so horrible and so bad. And they always argue, yeah. And in internally, there's always arguments that the plan doesn't work, and the idea is bad, the choice is not good, and all the time is coming inside us, mm. in our emotions. And of course, you got friends who are like that probably, but many times it comes in from inside us. You know, it's very true. Sometimes you meet these people who are just skeptical about everything, and then yes. you, you know, like you're mm, you kind of turn off about that. But it's, you know, I'm thinking, my goodness, thank goodness I don't live in your head. Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes, and uh, well, we got to be aware of this, and uh, by knowing that and uh, being skeptical, skepticism is part of us, and it and it's fine to be skeptical about things, but you have to do some research, but not just not just with everything. Oh yes, oh yes, and you you want to replace words like can? I, I'm sure there's a way out of this, and I want to do this. Yeah. Being more execution focused mm. is a way of overcoming being skeptical. Right. Being saying cannot tak boleh lah, yeah. yeah, and that will helps a lot. And I think when you keep having these conversations, you get into the state of helplessness. I cannot come out of it. You no, know, every time it's the same old excuse, and you can't get out into a solution mode. And it's just easy to wallow in that. Oh yes. Right. Oh yes. So cannot lah. After that, I well cannot lah. The next one is how can? How can? <laughs> And it's uh, mana mana mungkinism, <laughs> mana mungkin is well actually it's negativism. <laughs> okay. And uh, one of the self discipline sabotage tactic mm. on our own is to spotlight all of the negative happenings in your life. Mm. Well, you make mistakes in your life. All of us did. Yeah. And uh, and we'll do. And we'll uh, and we'll, we'll, we will. It will definitely yeah. will do again in our life. And uh, well, you eventually will come to a point that we say to ourselves, life is tough. And then you die. <laughs> <laughs> so why bother? Why bother? Okay. So one of the remedies of how can is that believe that your attitude has everything to do with your success. Hmm. Well, in our class, we always uh, talk about these incre- six incredible attitudes. Okay. Well, number one, the winning attitude. Hmm. Well, you always strike to win. Of course, a win-win situations. A self-confidence attitude, mm. a building inside out, and having self-confidence in the things that you do. The change attitude, and knowing that change is around the corners. And every day, you know, you look at change, you look at new stuff, and all that. Action attitude. You know, we've talked so much, and when are you going to act? Mm. Yeah, when are you going to take the first step forwards and to do it? The positive attitude. You know, people talk so much about that. So, you know. How much are you maintaining that from a day-to-day affair? Hmm. And the last one is a learning attitude. You know, things like this, learning a skill of self-discipline is a learning attitude. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, after how can? Well, after how can is like that, law. <laughs> <laughs> well, That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a uh, it's a uh, nasibism, eh? Nasib lah. Nasib, oh, yeah. Pessimism. Well, like that law is very interesting eh, because it is the baby of cannot la and how can. It's the baby. <laughs> yeah, okay. cannot la got married with how can. They got a baby. They are called like that law. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I, I work and train with so many people. I notice Malaysians many times we like to play victim to ourselves, right. being a victim. Right. Yeah, and we say things like, no, life is like that, like that law, like that, like that law. You know, we can't change. So the thing is, we want to be a victor, not a victim, mm. and rather than choosing to be a victim. And oftentimes we say, I'm, I'm too young for this, I'm too old for this, I'm in between, let's don't do anything first. And uh, that, is, that is important, or one of the remedies is believe in your ability to achieve success in work mm. and life. You know, having motto such as, nothing is going to stop me, mm. and believe in yourself and move forward. And that really helps and to help us to being self-disciplined and move on with our career, move on and achieve the goals. You know, uh, we, we're talking about this and it's very real and then you say to talk about slogans and all that. It's, how does that, you know, sometimes we say, ah yeah, those are just words. Uh, yes. Maybe you should put another six poison there. Like, you know? <laughs> but you know, these are just words. But they do play a very important role, isn't yes. it? In, in how we think. Yes. And sometimes people just say, you know, the people are going to be sceptical about these sort of things as well. So, it is important then to feed ourselves with the right words, yes. the right mindset, 
in that sense. Okay. Well, well, one other thing that we uh, we did not talk about is that there are actually two parts of us. Mm. Yeah, one part of us want to achieve more, and the other part of us do not want to. And I call I call the other part Bobo. You know, and Bobo like to play. Bobo like to have fun, and Bobo like to be creative. And that's why we always there is a child in us. Mm. And the question is, and many of us attend a lot of motivational camps. You know, we get so pumped up, and we go for it. You know, we, we scream and all that. And I think that is really good. Mm-hmm. And people go excited, moving towards their goals, and it lasted three days. Mm. Because the other part of us, Bobo, didn't want to work so much. Mm. So one of the things is to go in to look at and to work with Bobo rather than punish Bobo. Okay. And the part of us like to have fun. Okay. And and to deal with that. Like, and, and, that, and incorporate that into your life. Incorporate that into your life and, and reward Bobo and, and things like that. So, you know, rather than going for the easy stuff, they watch a TV rather mm. than reading a book. Mm. So so you tell yourself, I'm going to do the work. And then I will reward, I'll reward myself later on. So that is like working with two parts of you inside you while having fun. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. The fourth one. The fourth one. The fourth <laughs> one is don't know. Don't know. One of our favorite. It's uh, Taoisms, <laughs> well, being, being escapisms, actually. Okay, escapism. And uh, we, we escape from things. Okay. And, and many times in this self-discipline is about self-examinations. Look deep into yourself. And uh, there are many personality tools in the markets, you know, DISE, MBTI, even EQ profiling, there's a lot. Mm. And yet many people are not exposed to this. And uh, that, that, because when you examine yourself, that in order to find the treasure, you might encounter stones along the way. Mm. So it might not be pleasant. So we shy away and we stop doing the thing that we should do. So what you should do now is to look at life is always a cause and effect principles. And in your life, your actions are the cause. And the results of your actions are the effects. So knowing that, rather than escape from the project you should do, that we should rather face what we need to do. That helps, and that really helps in being able to discipline ourselves to move forward. Hmm, don't know, it's escapism, huh? Oh, yes. Hmm. Okay, the fifth one. Oh, the fifth one. Well, before the fifth one, don't know, one of the, often time, I believe, if, if we talk about don't know, huh? and I believe it is not what we don't know, but what we don't want to know. Ah. Ah. So that, that is something that really uh, strikes me and whenever I hear people say don't know. And it actually it means I don't want to know. Well, so, the fifth <laughs> one is see first. La. See first. Uh, see first. <laughs> Tengok duluism. Tengok duluism. Uh, actually, it's delayism. <laughs> And, uh, is what? Is what? Delay. Delayism. De- de- delayism. Okay. okay. And uh, see first. La. Okay. It's one of the favorite uh, sentence. You know? Wait. La. Tengok dulu. Uh, see how the weather is. See how the weather. Uh, yeah. you know? it, it simply means that I do not want to do. Eh? We, give, we give excuses like I don't have time. I'm too young for that. Eh? I just can't do it. And, and what do you do when you say, see first, la, you're setting more obstacles. Herders until you are completely paralyzed, powerless. Eh? Between you and your goals. Between you and the objective you want to achieve. What the point here is, one of the remedy is to recognize whether a given delay is legitimate. Right. Whether it's real. And that is whether the delay is working for you or against you. you. Well, well the, co- the question must be constantly addressed to neutralize delayism, mm-hmm. uh, one of the poison that we have in our life. Okay. And I guess when you have uh, the Cephas law, it's like, you know, I'll only come out of the house when all the traffic lights are green. Oh yes, you know. So if you if forever, you you'll never move. You you never move. Yeah, mm. knowing that well, they are red and then they're yellow and they're greens. You know, mm. that, that there are times that you need to actually find out more what you need to do and okay. just take a step forward. There's all I often tell the people that I coach and I train, mm. right, what you need to do, whatever that you're fearful of. And many of them say that I'm fearful of my boss to talk to my boss. I'm fearful of coaching my staff. Oh, I, I told them is emotionally what you need to do is take one step forward. Hmm. It's not about one step backwards. And that will really help to move you forward. So one step forward. And, uh, you know, it's been fun speaking to you. Thank uh, you. Aaron Lee from One Training, Work-Life Management. Uh, we've been discussing about self-discipline in the workplace. This is Racing Game, BFM 89.9. Thank you for listening to this podcast. To find more great interviews, go to bfm.my or find us on iTunes. BFM 89.9, The Business Station.